um, August 31st of the town of Lewisburg. Um, I'd like to begin by reading you the rules for the town board meeting of today. I am Supervisor Peter Parsons and I call to order the town of Lewisburg town board meeting for Monday, August the 31st, 2020 at 7.30. Before I go further, I want to confirm that Joel has started the recording of, of this meeting. In accordance with the governor's executive order number 202.1, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom. That link has been provided to the public so that they can view the meeting and we have confirmed that the feed is active and working. I have confirmed with Janet, our town clerk, that the meeting has been duly noticed and legal notice requirements fulfilled. Notice has been placed on the town of Lewisboro website and included in the email distributions from the town. With me on this Zoom conference meeting from the town of Lewisboro are members of the town board, Jennifer Castellano, Jane Crimmins, Tony Gonsalves, and Dan Welsh. Ah, yeah, sorry, Dan, I, I hadn't seen you before. Um, we have a quorum and can vote on any matters that come before the board. Um, also present are a town attorney, Anthony Malay, town clerk, Janet Donahue, Joel Smith Facilities Maintenance Director. At the public comments periods, we, we ask that only the following persons be permitted to speak. Residents of the town of Lewisboro, or of the Katona Lewisboro School District, owners of property in the town of Lewisboro, employees of the town of Lewisboro. If you want to speak at the public hearing or make a public comment, comment, please raise your hand at the appropriate time. To do that, if you are on Zoom, put your cursor at the bottom of the window and you should see an image of of people labeled participants. Click on that to get a panel on your right hand side with icons at the bottom. You can then raise your hand. Participants who have raised their hand will show up on the host screen in the order that you have raised your hand. The host will then unmute you and tell you that you have the floor. You may also have to unmute yourself if your microphone isn't active. <clears throat> we are also asking that your video be off during the duration of the meeting and only turned on when you are invited to speak. If you dialed in on a phone, you can raise your hand to indicate that you want to talk by pressing star nine. We will ask people to give their name and which hamlet they live in upon entering and to keep their comments, comments to two minutes. Our town clerk will be keeping time and you will hear a timer at the end of the two minutes. If someone is disrespectful or uses profanity at this meeting, they will be asked to leave the virtual meeting just as they would be asked to leave a physical meeting. Please remember that your camera is on and profanity will not be tolerated in any form, including gestures and acronyms. Now, please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, nation under God, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and, liberty justice, and justice for all. I would like to ask if anybody wishes to speak in the first public comment period, during which people are welcome to speak about every subject except leaf blowing, which will be in the second public comment period. Who wishes to speak? Uh, Peter, I have uh, a few hands up. The first that went up is Clifford. Clifford, I'm asking you to unmute. I believe and I'm unmuted. 
Can you hear me? Yes, and then I'm asking you to start your video if you'd like. Hi. Hi. Thank you Hi. for allowing me to speak, everyone. My name is Cliff Wallach. I reside on Lake Truesdale in the South Salem area. I've lived in Lurisboro for 20 years now. Um, I'm, I wish to speak around about the cell phone tower. You said that uh, anything but leaf blowing could be spoken about. So um, I am in opposition to both locations that were um, shown to the residences of the lake. And I also am very familiar with the, uh, the um, Echo Farm region and area. And I was very surprised to see where that tower is slated to be built. Um, I've actually spent time in that field during pumpkin hunts with my children around Halloween time when they volunteered that field to the town um, and actually hay took kids up in hay rides for years and years to that back area. Um, I have been driving around this town on business calls for years and I know that this area is not a dead zone, so I'm not sure why it's so important to put a cell tower in this area. I deduce that it's because the town would like to have a cell phone tower on their property to get revenue from it, which I can understand. But at the same point, I feel like there must be other locations that would make more sense for the dead zones that exist in the area. Um, so I'm opposed to the salt dome. I'm also opposed to the town hall area for the cell phone tower as a resident of the area, I think that it would be, um, it would be not, it would not be appropriate to take the sight lines of either area and damage them for the quality of cell that we may receive from that option. I think there must be better options. And I hope the town will look at those and take very seriously the concerns of the townspeople and what this would do in our minds to the sight lines and to the beauty of the area. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you. Uh, now we have uh, Adam Oaks. Adam, I'm asking you to unmute and also start your video. Okay, there you are, Adam. Okay, thank you. Um, Adam Oaks, uh, Vista Hamlet, um, and speaking on uh, in regards to um, emergency management. Good evening, everyone. Lewis for our emergency management would like to thank all, all our partners for their efforts, assistance, and support in responding to and recovering from the storm last week on 27 August 2020. We'd also like to recognize this day as International Overdose Awareness Day. And emergency manager also wants to extend our thoughts, blessings to all those impacted and responding to Hurricane Laura that made landfall in Louisiana last week. And a public awareness, as we all remember the, this past week in history, Hurricane Harvey in 2017, Isaac in 2012, Irma 2011, and Katrina in 2005. Tomorrow kicks off National Preparedness Month. It is everyone's responsibility to, to be prepared and to learn more about preparedness. You can go to ready.gov. Additionally, Lewisboro Emergency Management with, in, with partnership with New York City Emergency Management, we'll be coordinating webinars throughout the month. We all want to be prepared and be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. Next we have Jeremy Zittimer. I'm asking you to on mute. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, I want to thank you, Adam, for mentioning uh, National Overdose Awareness Day. Um, I just want to, so, sorry, Jeremy Zittermer, Golden Spridge. Um, um, it's been pretty sobering as a member of, uh, as a John Jay High School alum, to see a number of my classmates like, pass away from, from overdoses and, and suicide the last couple of weeks. Um, so I, I appreciate you just naming that here. Um, I, want to, I want to talk about this is this is not really directed at the town board so much as as the town. Um, I there there's been there's been a lot of real like a lot of 
fire and high temperature around the racial justice conversations that we've been having. And I wanted to go early in the in the queue because I want to I want to say up front that that it's my it's my wish and it's my hope that I think on on all sides we can turn the temperature down. Um, I think we all have a lot of we have a lot of strong feelings like deeply held on both sides. Um, and I think, and then just hearing it in the last conversation, so many people on both sides of this conversation are feeling an incredible amount of fear um, that's based in, in, in to some extent, like a lack of a lack of full understanding of what the other people are asking for on both sides, um, a lack of understanding of what our, our, what our experiences are over the last 10, 15, 20 years in this town. Um, and, and I know that the, the ultimate answer to this conversation is going to involve like a really a common and loving conversation among all the people in our town. Um, and, and I want us, and I want to invite us to be brave in showing compassion to each other, um, on, on both sides of this conversation. Um, because whatever the final answer looks like, you know, it's not going to be what the last couple of weeks have looked like. Um, and, and I know there are a lot of people listening here who have all different feelings, um, but I, I really want to invite us to try to make an active effort to change the tone of this conversation. I hope everybody in, who's listening will, will join me no matter what your perspective is. Um, so thank you to the town for facilitating the kind of dialogue that pushes us in a, in a respectful direction. Um, that's all I have to say. So thanks everybody. Okay. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you. Now I'm asking Robin Legonzowski to unmute, please. Hi, it's Robin Legonzowski, Vista. Um, I just wanted to add to that conversation that there are not, there aren't two sides to racial justice conversations. Everyone's on the same side with that. What there are two sides to is ambushing town board meetings when you live out of town don't pay taxes, being accused by people from other towns of certain things, such as being racist. Um, Mr. Parsons, you have been here a long time, as has my family, and I don't know why <clears throat> you are not understanding the entire town's feelings on things. People you know, have been here since 1959, like our family, and the town has pretty much been run the same way. We're used to, you know, not having any town services, but paying the highest taxes in the country, um, letting the town do their best to maintain the town properties when we have, you know, no garbage pickup, our roads are a mess. We look like we're in like a bomb zone all the time. So we kind of like keep our mouth shut. Um, so when people come here and accuse us of, you know, not being the way we should be, and we suck everything else up, that's when people start to talk and speak up. So it's not two sides to racial justice. There's only one side, and we're all on the same side. We just all don't have, we didn't get the memo on all the lingo we don't know how we're supposed to talk about it. So when you're accused of not talking about it properly, that's when people get upset. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Robin. Uh, next, uh, I'm asking Jim and Han uh, to unmute. Oh. Um, can you hear me? It says the host has not allowed me to show no, my we can yes, hear you. Yes, we can. Okay, so that's fine. Um, I, um, I just want to second what Jeremy said in that I'm, I just feel like this is something important to keep in mind. Um, and um, I hear what Robin is saying as well. And um, hi, Robin. We, we, we do know each other and we've, I've lived here in South Salem. Jim and Han, I'm sorry again. Um, and I, I guess I have to say that um, I also, I have young children, uh, not young, they're not young anymore. Um, they're teenagers and they constantly correct me. And I know I'm always um, not able to say the things. Um, so I hear you, Robin. I also um, feel that things um, are, 
there, there are some things that have been happening all along and then um, there are some things, it's so weird, I'm sorry, because I'm looking at my picture and I'm looking at all of you, so I'm a little discombobulated, but I just want to say that- um, you, you could turn on your video if you want, if that's um, what you're looking for. It says I can't, so let's see. Oh, okay. Okay, better, ah, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so I, I just, I guess I just want to say that um, I want to support the leadership here on the town board. I was not present at that meeting um, all along, but I have been present at the other ones. And I do want to say that, um, that we need to uh, not, I guess, when my children talk to me about some things that are happening, it's important to listen. And I'm not saying that Robin, you're not listening or anybody else is not listening. I guess I'm just saying that there are injustices. There's an opportunity here for us to put up um, a sign that just says Black Lives Matter and to think, just to have a conversation and think about ways that, that we can make things more equal and just. Um, and I see it, this is not to, to, to make it very simplistic, but you know when you're driving down the road and you see a sign that says, drive like your children live here, it's just, to me, it just feels like we're making a statement and we're making sure that everyone knows this is what we stand for. And um, I, uh, sorry, that's my time. Yeah, time is up. There's more I want to say, okay. and I'm a little bit rattled, but I want to say I really support Jeremy's sentiment here and I do believe in having these conversations and thank you to the town board. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Alrighty. And Next, we have Sebastian. Sebastian, I'm asking you to unmute. Okay. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes. Uh, I want to echo Jeremy and say, uh, I feel that on both sides of this discussion we're having, there's a lot of fear. And that fear comes out in, in a way like accusations and uh, the posting of information. And I think that we can do better together and I look forward to watching us do so. That's all I have to say, thank you. Okay, thank you. And next, Allison. I'm asking Allison to unmute. Hello, how's everyone? Um, I just had a couple of things I wanted to address with the town board tonight. First thing, emails. Um, I think a lot of us are frustrated because we speak to you guys on here and you tell us, email us, email us, email us, but we never get a response. The only person, uh -huh. the only person that sometimes responds is Tony and we don't get responses from anyone else. And I think it's a little disheartening that, you know, our, we feel like our voices aren't being heard. Um, second thing is, I'd like to know how the, bo um, the board came to pick Ronald Ross um, to be part of the committee. Um, I read where it said that he was retired from Greenberg schools, but he was actually fired. And um, he was fired for a bunch of um, statements against women. So I'm wondering how you guys came to that decision. And that's, that's all I have to say. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, Jimbo. I'm asking Jimbo to unmute, please. Hello, everyone. Hello from the most racially inclusive part of Katona Lewisboro, Vista, where people residing in Oak Ridge condominiums have not had drinkable tap water for over 6,937 days. But yet we are concerned about gas leak blowers killing bugs. I have two uh, propositions for the Committee on Racial Relations regarding police. I believe that we should revert to the British system of policing and take away weapons of mass destruction and replace with very large whistles. Secondly, I think we should defund the canine patrol. Uh, the German Shepherd, it's a trigger for some people. And if we don't want to defund that, we can actually replace it with something like a French poodle or a golden doodle, you know, and preferably a neutral color. Finally, Dan Walsh, uh, Sustainable Westchester Inc. Looking forward to your reviewing. 
return of organization exempt from income tax form 990 for 2020. We know he benefited in 2019 when I was sitting as a town board member, making $115,000 for 40 hours of work. Curious how much he will make this year while being an active board member. Is it a conflict? Don't know. I'm looking into that. And finally, for the Lewisboro Police Department, I think they should get a new police station, preferably at the town park, and have a solar power generator. Thank you all, and have a nice night. Okay, and it appears that is it for public comment. Okay, in that case, I'd like to move on to communications. And the first item in communications is a resolution adopted by the town board of the town of Lewisburg at a meeting held on August 31st, 2020. Whereas Morgan Berhance of Golden's Bridge is a rising senior and a varsity field hockey player attending John Jay High School, who had planned to spend her Friday evenings teaching special needs children to play soft floor hockey at an adaptive nonprofit recreational facility called Healing Hearts in Stamford, Connecticut. All this as a way to make the sport safe and engaging and fun for these adolescents. And whereas when Morgan Berhans was stymied in this endeavor by COVID-19, which prevented any in-person contact, she decided to create, to create a virtual fundraiser in which she shot 1,000 goals into a heart-shaped net while creating a Facebook page to honor the teens for whom she was successful in collecting over $7,000. And whereas this dedication to public service is an example to all and is deserving of public notice, now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Lewisburg in the county of Westchester in the state of New York, in recognition of the worthy service of this citizen of the town of Lewisburg, does hereby offer the thanks of its populace to Morgan Berhans for her dedication to improving the life of special needs children. Be it further resolved that this resolution be spread upon the minutes of the August 31st, 2020, 2020 town board meeting for future generations to see and, this, and that copies of this resolution be presented to the family of Morgan Berhans, dated at South Salem, New York, on this 31st day of August 2020, signed by myself. Thank you very much, Morgan, for setting a first-class example to all of us. I normally would present this to you at this point, but in fact, um, in this day of COVID-19, I've got to mail it to you. We're together with a copy for your parents. Thank you very much indeed. Moving on. Um, uh, Peter, were we, I saw, I thought, was it Ron, Ron Fuchs who had some relationship to this? Yeah. Yes. Would it uh, ask him to reflect on this or? Yeah, and I, and I yes, think- Yes, certainly, uh, Morgan, if you Morgan, want to, but- Mo um, Morgan is on as well, so- uh, let's Okay, see I was looking for her and I didn't see her. I saw her earlier, so I'm asking Ron, I'm asking Ron to unmute. Um, well, I think Morgan is on the Shannon on her screen, Shannon Burhans, possibly. Oh, maybe that's why I wasn't finding her. Yeah. Okay, Shannon, okay, there's Shannon. Okay. I asked Hello. Shannon. Hello. Okay, now I'm going to ask you to start your video. Hello, I'm Morgan. There you are. And then uh, Ron Fuchs, I'm asking you to start your video. Hi, Morgan. Hello, how are you? Guys. Yeah, I'm sorry I can't physically give it to you now, but it will be mailed. Thank you so much for everything. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. 
Um, Thank you for your work. There's only one thing I'm not sure we have, which is a physical address. We have, I have your email address, but not your physical address, I think. If she, if she wants to email me, to, yeah. if, if you prefer to do that, um, okay. Morgan, to townclerk at lewisboroughgov.com. Okay. All right. Hi, Thank Ron. So I'm not quite sure what your role in this is, but I assume you're something of a coach. Correct. Correct. And um, I just wanted to make the town aware that even in this time of social distancing, when we're all going through this strange time where we can't be together and it's not possible to be in person, that Morgan was able to create something that helped in a tremendous way for special needs children. And throughout the spring and the summer, she diligently um, made goals in her driveway at a distance of 16 yards to help special needs children. And she raised $7,361. And the reason I think it's important that the community know this is she's just a wonderful example of one of our young adults, a, a John Jay rising senior, who was able to do something in these challenging times to help others. And she really understands the value of community and she created a virtual community because there were exactly 100 people who contributed. So it's, it's a big thank you to the town as well because the town got behind it and really um, supported her for her project in helping special needs teens. So just congratulations to Morgan. She did an amazing job. She was so dedicated to it. Morgan, so what fun. a great... Morgan, what a great use of your like skills and your passion to use them for others. I hope that you use that every endeavor that's coming. You should so be wondrous. really proud. Thank you. Yeah. Really inspiring. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Dan, for Thank you so much, Morgan. Thank you. To my attention. And sure. um I'd like to go on with my next communication, if I might. Yeah. Um, from Amy Hodges. Um, Good morning. A week ago, Saturday, my husband Guy was traveling eastbound on Route 35. Another vehicle was traveling westbound and inexplicably, inexplicably decided to make a U-turn at the South Salem Fire Department striking Guy's vehicle and left the scene without stopping. Oof. Thankfully, Guy's re reflexes are quick and he was not injured and his vehicle did not sustain damage that could not be fixed. The responding Lewisboro officer, William Gray, displayed a calming presence, professionalism, kindness, and made the effort to locate the vehicle that left the scene finding the front section with the license plate still attached. I was surprised and grateful when he showed up at our home this Saturday with the police report. Some might say he was simply doing his job, but some go the extra mile, and this demonstrates real character. So it is with gratitude that we write this letter to the town. Um, I know, Peter, that I have also verbally expressed gratitude for Chief Alfano's attention and quick response to our concerns with vehicles parked along the side of our windy, narrow road. We are a small town and we are fortunate that our police department responds quickly, efficiently, and professionally. Finally, um, this is... Um, something I think we need to get out. Uh, Park and Rec Department is eagerly planning a study hall for town of Lewisboro students of the Katona Lewisboro School District starting this fall. The purpose of the program called the Lewisboro Learning Lot or three L's is to provide an academically oriented space to supplement the virtual school classes provided by Increase Miller, Katona, and Meadow Pond Elementary Schools. We anticipate running this program during school hours from September to December with a start date of Monday, September 14th, 
and an end date of Friday, December 18th. The eligible participants must be Lewisboro residents and must be in grades two through five. The program will be supervised by directors Michael Portnoy and Reed Pullum and will include three class leaders. The class leaders being recent graduates from accredited education programs and have experience working with children. You will find more on the Park and Rep website. I, I think that this, I'd like to compliment Park and Rec for working their heart out to put this together once they knew what the school's program was going to be. I think it's a fantastic effort by them and they deserve compliment. Um, next, oh, the can, I'd like to, uh, move approval of the minutes of the July 27th, 2020 meeting. Do I have a second? Second. second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 I want to, new business. I'd like to um, discuss a, a, a memorial bench at Leon Levy. This will be placed, if the bench would be approximately 48 inches by 18, made of hand cut blue stone created by David Mormon at Pound Ridge Stone in Vista. The stone will have an etched inscri inscription with Times Roman lettering, um, unless Lisa Wickersham, for whom uh, for whose husband this will be made a memorial, um, prefers an inset, an inset bronze plaque. The bench will be on the left side of the parking lot as you are entering near to the stone wall bordering Smith Ridge Road and just past the spaces designed for horse trailers. Um, I plan to take this for approval to ACARC, and we are also sending it to approve for approval with OSPAC. Um, are any questions from the board? No, but I think it's it's wonderful to have a memorial to Ed Worker. <laughs> he he uh, contributed a lot to the town over the years, and you know he's sorely missed. And this is a really nice nice gesture. I'd also like to thank Shelby for covering a significant portion of the cost of this. That's Shelby White, sorry. Um, can I have a second to approve us moving forward with this? Second. Th discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like a resolution to, I'd like to make a resolution approving the county, the Westchester County Tracks, tra which stands for Traffic and Criminal Software Agreement, and offering the police chief, what? And authorizing the police chief to sign it. This, you should know, is basically something that is paid entire for, entirely um, by the state troopers rather than ourselves. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to make a resolution to waive the fees for the, for the Golden Bridge Hamlet Association's use of the Town Park Pavilion on August 6th, 2020. Do I have a second? Second. What are, what are they doing? Mm. This is a, um, it's a meet the candidates. Oh, okay. Event, but there is, but I'll, I'll wait till discussion. Go ahead. I have something to say. Discussion. <laughs> okay. Um, so the, the date has actually been revised to October 7th. Oh, thanks. You've already revised the, where it's going to be. <laughs> uh, uh, I, yes. <laughs> well, I didn't, but. <laughs> so we're now revising the date. Correct. 
and t and October eighth is the is the um, rain date. Okay, so, but the resolution is to waive the fees, whichever the date is. That okay. is pretty standard, right, for this kind of activity. Does any other person wish to speak? As long as all candidates are invited, I guess, which I assume is the, the case, you know, so then, then it should be fine. All in favor? Uh, uh, Jonathan Monty actually has his, raise, his hand. I don't know if he wants to say he is the chair of the Golden Spirit Hamlet organization. Okay, let me. Uh... Jonathan. Um... Did he go away? No, I, I, well, I don't know. There he is. There he is. Oh, he's muted there. Good. Uh, am I allowed to speak? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, You're invited evening, to. And thank you to the town board for considering waiving these fees. Um, Dan, to answer your question, yes, all of the candidates who are um, running are invited. And if there are any uh, candidates who do come out, later on they will be invited as well so we will have at present there are four people running for the various um government positions and all four have been invited and all four are uh, attending great and the there? correct date is the seventh the seventh yes at the pavilion and the rain date of the eighth okay and Candidates will be at the pavilion and it will be a Zoom based event. We just feel that it would be easier for the candidates to be in one centralized spot, socially distanced, of course, and on their own devices, and the audience would be participating via Zoom. Okay. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Um, I'd like to. Uh, oh. Can I have a vote on that, seeing as we finished the discussion? Please. Did I get a second, Janet? You did, Dan Welsh. Um, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. I'd, like now, I'd now like to move on to, um, I'm gonna take the next two items out of order. Um, a resolution approving a renegotiated lease agreement with Crown Maple Syrup for maple tapping at the Brownell Preserve and reaffirming the supervisor's author. Oh, yeah. can somebody take over? Dan. <laughs> Authorize the supervisor to sign the renewal of the maple tapping uh, agreement for Brownell Preserve. We Stop get it. a payment of uh, a slightly increase, a 10% increase in that payment this on the renewal of the lease they have proved to be good tenants and they have and i'd urge people who haven't to go on one of the tours which they give of the maple syrup uh, area i think um, you can learn a bit about uh, maple tapping and see that they really are rather conscientious in the way they work in that area of the preserve, maintaining the trails, etc. cetera. Um, does somebody have a, uh, do I have a second? No, not second. yet. Second. Second. Discussion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> I'd now like to move on to a discussion of leaf blower restrictions. Um, I'll have its public comment period after the board has had a chance to speak, which will be purely on that topic. For the benefit of people who are not aware, what we're considering is some restriction on the use of gasoline powered leaf, leaf blowers. Specifically, um, we are considering um, banning them um, 
uh, if they're gasoline powered during the summer months from May 1st to September 30th. The restriction is um, shall not apply to performing cleanup within 10 days of a named storm, tornado, or microburst, or to the maintenance of cemeteries or municipal property where public safety or program operations are effective. Um, why are we even getting into this? Two reasons. The first reason is, as we all, as we, I think most of us know, there is a rather daunting increase in the amount of people suffering from asthma, which has increased in this country times two since 1980. And that's across all age, sex, and racial groups. Except it is somewhat stronger, the increase among children. Um, having had a child with asthma, this is not fun. It means uh, fairly frequent trips to a hospital and it means carefully monitoring the way they dose themselves. Um, and quite honestly, it is a weakness which lasts for the, less, for, the, for the rest of your life. The other reason for considering it in my mind is quite simply uh, climate change, um, where we would like to re re reduce carbon monoxide okay, this is a relatively small reduction in the scheme of things, but we need to make a series of small steps, I believe. First, at the moment, temperatures have soared above 100 degrees and energy, uh, oh, sorry, this is according to David Calloway in USA Today, based on California, where temperatures have soared above 100 degrees and energy regulators impose rolling blackouts as demand for air conditioning has overtaxed the grid. This is what the coming climate disaster will bring, fire, droughts, floods, and hurricanes, finger pointing mass evacuations and millions of angry people. We have also got a problem which may seem a little nearer to us. That's Greenland. Ian Howard of Ohio State University has pointed out that Greenland's disappearing ice sheet is a problem for all humanity. Sea levels are expected to rise more than three feet by the end of this century, swamping many coastal communities. Um, town board, what do you think? Dan? Uh, sure, I'll go first. I want to, I want to thank you, Peter, for uh, putting this out for our, our consideration. I think it's a very a modest step uh, in this area. Um, I know that there's a lot of people out there who think that this is, you know, all about the nanny state and, and um, you know, overreach and things like that. But uh, I believe all the factors that you just cited are, are real. And um, we do know that the impacts of climate change are felt in very disparate ways. And that, you know, we, we started hearing about them uh, when, uh, when, you know, back in the 70s and Bangladesh was underwater. And, you know, so all the folks who were not responsible for uh, the, the great bulk of the greenhouse gas emissions were getting hit first and their islands submerged, et cetera, et cetera. And we, we do need to take these steps. And when they're as modest as this one is, um, you know, with, with such little impact on, on people's, um, you know, daily lives, I think, you know, it's, it's uh, really incumbent on us to 
to say, okay, we can make those kinds of, of moves. Further, I would say that, you know, the, during the summertime, the, obviously that's not the time with the big leaf falls and we all, you know, you can drive around town and, and see big teams with leaf blowers out blowing almost nothing. Just it's like part of their routine and that's what they do and they finish up and they're blowing and maybe there's some clippings, you know, here and there, but um, there's really no, no great need. It's just kind of a routine at this point. And I, and I think, you know, if you, I think it's almost, it's a, one of the cases of the kind of uh, f frog in the boiling water thing where, you know, we never used to have this going on, uh, you know, decades ago, but gradually we kept adding these, these like, well, we just blow our, blow our, you know, like blowing our hair or something every time we do our lawns uh and and think nothing of it but it it's really cumulative it does have an impact and i think if we can say hey you know we can take this step we can help those people who are suffering from asthma and it's not not really a big deal then that speaks well of us and you know i know i know again that some people will that will not register immediately versus some of these other um perceptions but but I hope they'll understand. This is not something where we are out ahead of people. Uh, I'm afraid it, action has been taken by a considerable number of towns in Westchester already. And um, I'd like to point out that even in the summer, when in fact, at least judging by my property, about the only thing a leaf blower is used for is cleaning up my driveway, which I must admit I don't care about very much. Um, and the paved walkway to the townhouse, to the townhouse, to the front door, which is possibly a little bit more important. And, and the we're, still, we're still saying, we're still saying easily, electric blowers are okay. Right, for that yes. little- Electric blowers, we're saying, go ahead and use them. And for those small, relatively small jobs, they are more than adequate in my mind. No, they're, they're ideal. In fact, a lot of them you could use it on the low speed. You know, don't be tempted to, to try and just, you know, uh, supersonic blow everything away. Because again, that, that raises a lot more of the particulate matter. I know that a lot of people think that noise is a reason for doing this. I've purposely left noise out because practically by the time uh, the police respond to you, probably, probably the noise has gone down. And even if it hasn't, I don't have a police force fully equipped with decibel monitors, which would be essential if you're really going to enforce a noise ordinance. And anyway, noise is an annoyance, but it isn't in my mind, one of the critical reasons for doing this. Sorry, I've spoken too much. Jane, Jen. I think my only question is, I know that we had solicited some feedback from the landscapers that do business in town. And I'm just curious how that conversation went. I think um, you were involved in that, Dan. And then I guess the direction it looks like we're headed in is similar to Bedford, where we're looking at more of a leaf season, an on season and an off season for when we would be permitting these types of leaf blowers, the gasoline powered. Yeah, so versus the that latter comment, this is a seasonal. Right, that's what I'm saying. We're going in the same direction sure. for people who are looking at possibly what others in the area or other towns have done. It's similar to the Bedford model, essentially. As far as the, the dialogue with the landscapers, I have to say yeah. that Peter probably had more of oh, that. Oh, okay. The dialogue with the landscapers, it would I think we're going to hear from them pretty soon, but basically okay. the, um, it's pretty clear to me that very few of them had much patience with this proposal. Mm -hmm. What depressed me is I was hoping not for universal agreement, but I was hoping for a proposal from them, 
because we began to discuss this last April, I think. Um, I was hoping that by this time they would have a counter proposal, which was more to their liking, but in fact would still achieve some considerable portion of the objective of helping people who had breathing problems and reducing carbon emissions. I was wrong. Uh, Jane. Um, I had Jen's question, which you've answered. Um, and I also wanted to ask about the voluntary um, survey we sent out about like voluntarily um, not using your leaf blower and perhaps, you know, rolling that into some kind of educational campaign. And I know the answer to this next piece is going to be budget, 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 but I also, what happened to composting? Um, and I'm wondering about that quite a bit. And, um, and so the, that's, those are my discussion points. Either one of you can answer them. Thanks. Composting, quite honestly, I want to make sure that it isn't, that as planned, it is not going to come into dramatic conflict with any cell tower in the same area. I want people to be able to get to the composting <clears throat> and not, in fact, cr because it's become a total recycling area as planned. And thirdly, I'm waiting, I admit, to see what the financial situation of the town is as we move into the end of the year. And it's clear how many people have paid their school taxes. Because I think, as the board all knows, if somebody doesn't pay their school taxes, the town has to pay them for them. Say so on that last count there, um, there's a good chance that the, uh, some of the revenues from the solar, uh, solar projects uh, can, can cover a good piece of that, if not, if not all of it. Um, what, a, a large piece of school taxes? No, no, no. The, uh, the, I'm sorry, the composting, right? Oh, the, yes. The it may well be able to. Yeah, but, but I don't know if you want to wait for all, all the dust I to say. Am, All I and Leo are doing, and doing our damnedest to do, quite honestly, is delay almost any expenditure until we are clear what the impact of school taxes will be on the town's cash flow. Sure. Um, as far yeah, that's a pr as pretty far grim as recycle, but I don't think we're going to get help from the county because they're probably in worse state than we are. And I certainly don't believe we're going to get count, uh, help from the state, which seems to also have financial problems of its own. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think we have to take care of ourselves. And as far as the, the survey, um, we did get a bunch of replies on that. Is and Jack or Nancy here? I don't know. What's, oh, what's the last name, Peter? Yeah, I see Nancy. Nancy. Okay, Nancy, if you want to handle that question, you'll, yes, Nancy, you can do a better job than me. I know we've got 415 responses, oh. but I don't know what they say. A handful. Oh. That's more than a handful. Right. So um, there weren't too many um, people who actually commented on the voluntary uh, reduction. Hmm. Um, you know, maybe a handful of people said that they would do that. They'd be happy to do that. I know where I live here, the landscapers have voluntarily reduced uh, their use over the summer of um, gas powered leaf blowers. But it wasn't, you know, wasn't one of the things that they commented on. There are a lot of other comments uh, about uh, the uh, proposal. And, and where is that, Nancy? That they reduce the use of gas blowers? At the Meadows Condominium. Okay. The board, the board had actually asked them in the beginning of the summer uh, to reduce their use, and I did actually see um, them using electric, and I saw them with rakes and brooms, and 
uh, they, it did seem to me, and I'm retired, I'm home, I, it did seem to me that there was, that they did reduce their use voluntarily, which was nice. Can be done, yeah. Um, so we did, we did get a lot of comments in the survey that were, you know, pretty negative in terms of, you know, why are you guys doing this? And, you know, aren't there other things, better things to do? And, you know, so there was a lot of that, I have to say. And, you know, I get it, okay. <laughs> uh, and, then there were, and then there were some folks who were like, this is great, you know, thank you. Um, okay, so that's helpful. Um, those, that answers those two questions. I actually did have another question or point. Um, Peter and I had had a conversation about this I had opened a conversation with him saying, well, what are we willing to do on our end? And um, it sounded like he actually, like, it sounded like he had a satisfying answer to that, but we didn't discuss it any further. Uh, Peter, do you remember that or can we, can you? No, I don't. Because it's so rare for anybody to say I've got a satisfying answer on anything. Oh. <laughs> okay. My perception could be off, but I um, but I am curious about what we're willing to do on the town side. Do we use leaf blowers? Oh, how does maintenance okay. feel about it? We don't know? use any leaf blowers on um, on parkland. All right, we mulch. The maintenance department mulches. Um. So that's all the playing fields and things like that. And the, the lawn in front of the townhouse and the library and areas of that kind. Mm. We do use a, um, a leaf blower when in the cemeteries because it is really difficult. First of all, the problem of cemeteries is if you're not careful, you cause substantial damage to uh, memorials mm. and um, it's mainly the work in this in the uh, cemeteries is either a hundred or ninety percent done by um, by contractors and not by the town mm. finally um, there are two departments that use leaf blowers at the moment one is Park and Rec, which uses it around the pool mainly and around baseball, um, baseball, basketball courts mm -hmm. and things of that kind. And finally, um, the highway department uses them to clean a road immediately before they put, uh, put down new um, new pavement. So in the uh, in the the draft, we do uh, set out the the uh, cemeteries as an exception, uh, yes. as well as a any any uh, instances where public safety is uh, is at stake, and that would cover the these uh, issues on the on the highways. Uh, I would say for the for the usage around the pool and whatnot, that we had better get ourselves a couple of electric blowers if that's the if that's the issue, and uh, and take care of that. And I agree, Dan. So so I would say we would want to hold ourselves to you know to the draft as it is presented here. Um, Tony, any comments before I invite? Yeah, so, um, so I people I, to comment. I do. I do have a, a couple of comments. So I, I heard about the feedback. So that was one of them. So thank you very much. I mean, I, I um, yeah, so I, I was very interested in what the landscapers had to say. Uh, of course, you know, concern is with a lot of the smaller guys and what uh, further investments they have to make in additional new equipment. Um, but I do hear from some people that landscapers in some cases are already using or have uh, electric blowers. Um, the, um, the restriction on the season, um, I, I kind of like what, what Bedford did. They, they are basically restricting the gas powered blowers during the off season around Hamlet zones. Now I know we don't have Hamlet zones, 
Uh, That's the problem. Where, how are we going to define Hamlet zones here? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the one that, you know, you know, the metals was mentioned, I think that's, you know, that whole cross river center could be, you know, one potential Hamlet zone. Um, yeah, so that's just something to, you know, that, that crossed my mind. Um, I think that particular aspect has not been a perfect thing for Bedford either, in as much as, you know, at the end now you've distinguish the town into different parts and and you know you got part of the town saying well why does it apply to me and not them or whatever right you know? so that's that's not a you know a home run necessarily okay. mm -hmm. i also don't quite understand its logic quite honestly tony because it seems to me that what it's really doing is exempting large properties right it, it does and large properties I'm far more keen, quite honestly, if I'm going to exempt people, to exempt very small properties. Mm -hmm. If we assume that there is some relationship between size of property and income. And, and just the, if we're, you know, the, the, the greenhouse gases and the particulate matter are, are in play, then, you know, if you blow off, you know, five acres of grass for, for no reason, then just stir that up and, you know, and have caused those emissions, then those are right. greater, you know. I mean, I would hope that somebody with five acres of grass isn't blowing five acres of, of grass, that they're mulching, right? <laughs> um, that would be the, the thought. I mean, I, I um, yeah. you know, so that, that's just my, my opinion. But... Um, the, the other thing at Bedford did, which I kind of like, is, you know, between their leaf season and off season, they, they have hours, you know, so they have hourly restrictions. Um, and so reduced hours of operation during weekdays, for example. Um, you know, so that's something that I don't know if we can fit that into here. Maybe that's something, you know, we, uh, could be discussed. And, and again, I, I maybe have... Huge hours. So you're saying allow um, petrol or diesel, um, sorry, petrol, gasoline or diesel lend, uh, leaf blowers during, this, during the summer, during certain hours? No, no. Because I, the rest of the year they're allowed. Yes, yeah, so, so it's a combination. So the next thing I was gonna say, maybe I like the mate of September, but maybe we can reduce that a bit because right now leaves are starting to fall. We've had a very dry, sea, you know, dry um, summer overall. Um, I see with my property a lot of leaves, but you know, I, I, I mulch them typically. Um, but the um, but having the um, uh, 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 basically a, a segregation between the off season and, and leaf season, but reduced hours of operations. And, and it, it could be a combination of electric blowers. Um, you know, one other thought that crossed my mind is you have gasoline powered lawnmowers. We're not restricting any of that. And those are the ones that are in most use, right? So when you're mowing five acres, you're using a gas powered lawnmower. Now, one thing I don't know about some of these leaf blowers, especially the professional grade ones, I, I know that the particular uh, uh, particulate matter um, information that's, you know, that's one, one of the reasons we're looking to do this uh, applies mainly for the two cycle engines, right? The ones where you mix oil with gas, uh, meaning gasoline engines are cleaner. Um, is there something matter? There's a particular matter associated with the combustion, yes. In which case, is the the diesel is a little bit worse, right? But also, it's also the the you know airflow of 600 cfm picking up every everything up. That's that's a big piece right. of the, the matter as well. Right. So so the point there is that the electric blowers aren't going to blow at 600 cfm. Um, it's you know mm -hmm. frankly it's still an issue, and people should use the lower settings, uh, you know, if they're just, if we're talking about just using them to sort of, you know, dust off the bluestone mm -hmm. walkway or something. Right, you know, they should use the lower setting, right. 
you know, that comes off like easily. You, right. You just blow on it and it'll come off. So, right. so I mean, people, you know, there's still an element of sort of common sense. Right. That we hope, but, but this, I think, sends a signal. Mm -hmm. A lot of times that's, that's what this is about is just starting the, the thought processes. Mm -hmm. Right. But I agree with you on the, I mean, the mowers are a big piece. They're, they're huge emitters. And I would encourage anybody who's listening, don't, you know, there is no reason to be buying a gas mower anymore. The electric mowers are fantastic. They're quiet and they're clean. And uh, even on the large properties these days, there are, there are now, you know, riding mowers and, uh, you know, just keep, keep a couple of batteries charged and you can get all that work done. And that, that's where it's going to go inevitably. Right. And like all these things, like the electric vehicles, we're just trying to give it a little nudge, you know? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, and I have to admit, I, I switched just this year to an electric mower. And it's, I, I, I like it a lot better than my heavy gas-powered one. And, right. and you're right, it's two batteries and you swap them and you can do a nice size uh, lawn with it. Um, I, 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 I'd like to see, you know, from, from the landscapers that we've provided, maybe they can provide some input. Let, let's say, you know, give yes. them the opportunity to tell us what they, knowing that we're going to do something potentially, what would they uh, like to see in this? I mean, I don't want to hear them say, no, don't do anything. But maybe they have, maybe the landscapers that are uh, cleaning up the metals. So if we put this to hearing, you know, if we schedule a hearing, then that would be, I think, an impetus right. for them to, to step up. And, and maybe some of them are on here now with their hands up. So I'd like to, yeah, get, hear, hear yep. from them. Because I haven't seen well, any of that feedback. So. Uh, right. Does anybody else on the board want to speak or shall we move? Or Nancy, Jack, do either of you want to say something? Um, I, I just want to confirm what you said about... Uh, uh, Jack has just come into the picture. I've, I've been here all along. <laughs> I just wanted to confirm something that you said, Peter, about the children and the cor correlation between the um, environmental exposure uh, and asthma. And it's been uh, correlated in many studies uh, that chil children are particularly affected by the uh, emissions from... Uh, various gas internal combustion engine type of uh, equipment. Uh, so <clears throat> I just wanted to, to emphasize that piece of it. And there's, there's a definite relationship between those emissions and asthma. And I just want to mention that, uh, you know, it may, when we look at this globally, it may seem that, you know, what are leaf blowers? How much, how much are they contributing to, to pollution, like particulates and smog? Well, the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation has on their website that operating a leaf blower for one, one hour is the equivalent of driving a, a vehicle for eight hours. So it's not insignificant. Now, Jack, do they, do they differentiate between a two-cycle leaf blower engine versus a four-cycle? Uh, I didn't on their yeah, website, I but I think the, the two-cycle is less... Um, emitting an emission uh, problematic. I, I would actually think it's probably more because of the fact that it's got oil mixed in, it's burning oil. We'll research that to see if, uh, you know, for the hearing to see if there's, uh, uh, if you can distinguish between two, two and four cycle. And I just like, want to make one more point that the American Lung Association, they have a monitoring station in White Plains and they have given Westchester wow. County failing grades for many, many years. And that's primarily because of the ozone. And the ozone is what's created from the emissions of hydrocarbons uh, from internal combustion engines. And particularly these, they call them um, small off-road uh, em uh, engines, mm -hmm. which is what the lawnmowers and the gas, um, gas powered leaf blowers are called. Right. So I think, you know, that's something that we should know about. And it's, it's particularly in the summer months where we have um, these failing grades. Uh, and I also mentioned, um, Peter and Dan uh, talked about the link with climate change. Um, that all comes about because of the hydrocarbons coming from the, from the leaf blowers, mixing in with other chemicals and sun, sun, sunlight during uh, uh, heat waves. That produces a lot of different pollutants, including ozone, which is a greenhouse gas. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd, I'd like to do two things. I'd like to make a motion to uh, schedule a public hearing. I don't want to do that yet because if I can hear a clear voice from the landscapers who either on the phone or when they speak now, that they will come back with their own proposal, um, then I'm prepared to give them time to do that and not Ooh. confine them to two weeks. <laughs> um, quite honestly, um, there is no reason why they shouldn't take a month to get back to us. Um, so I'd like to uh, open uh, the second comment period for people to discuss leaf blowers. Okay, Peter, there's several hands up. What a uh, surprise. <laughs> I, I would like to remind you that there's a two minute time period. If you could state your name and also the hamlet of where you live. And this is not a back and forth. It's simply statements in the public comment period. Uh, I will ask Mr. Hunt to unmute, please. Hello. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Just on the leaf blower situation. It's a little tough on the small guys that have a business to reinvest into equipment that may not even do the job on people with large properties. Also, there's homeowners that pay for a service, and now they're not going to get that service. It's going to be another strike against a small business guy. Now, I understand the whole thing about the gas engines, but you're saying it's okay if a homeowner or a landscaper wants to go out and mulch every day somebody's property, then you're okay with that, with a gas lawnmower, which defeats the whole purpose in itself. And as far as the asthma, I'm not an expert, but I think the main concern of asthma, it happens in the big cities, not so much in our areas. Again, I'm not an expert. On another note, I just want to know why the board is glossing over the appointment of Ron Ross to this committee, a man who had federal charges brought against him for racism and discrimination. How Excuse you- me, but I am not I'm going speaking. to answer any comments about a specific individual. We do not bring up individuals' names okay. I won't in name open him. session. How is the unnamed individual being glossed over by the woke town board that we have? Answer me that one. Mr. Ron I'm Ross. not going to because I'm not going Mr. to discuss. Mr. Ron Ross. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, uh, we have Simone Petromellis. I'm asking you to unmute. Hi, Simone from Vista. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. In prior meetings, we learned that a board member felt our beautiful town is filled with white supremacists. Tonight, it's gas leaf blowers to cure asthma and affect climate change, supported by an article about California. Why does this town board feel the need to regulate every aspect of our lives? We're living through a worldwide pandemic. Some of us have lost people. Others are dealing with our children getting back to school or working on remote learning. More of us are working through this entire nightmare, but this board feels we must deal with the very serious issue of leaf blowing. How exactly did you come to this? Did someone look at the calendar and think, I got it, leaves fall, leaf blowers. Then an innocuous survey goes out to only certain people It's mentioned a bit as gathering info in the last meeting. And once again, here we are where it's on the agenda. Is it in the next meeting where you all vote for whatever you want or two meetings from now? What's next? Snow, winter, snow plows. Stop for a minute and listen to the townspeople. You wonder why there's a divide? Perhaps being woke is not as important as being awake. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Simone. 
Now I'm asking Robin Legonzowski to unmute. Again, Robin Legonzowski, Vista. Um, Mr. Parsons, why didn't you ask Lee, my husband, to talk to you? He's a landscaper, employed as a landscaper, a small business in this town for 30 plus years. You know him, you didn't ask him. I will uh, add him to the list. Well, I mean, really? You didn't think of him? Okay. So anyway, I have asthma. I've been married to Lee for 22 years. It does not affect a town like Lewisboro. White Plains, yes, where lots are smaller. Bedford is in, like putting this, these rules in to their small lots. Dan, would you like a leaf blower ban in your area since you live on a half acre lot? Because I don't, and I, don't, I can't do that. Plus our town looks messy all the time. Why would you stop people from cleaning their yards up? You want people to move here? I mean, before the pandemic, we had major, major low enrollment in our schools where we had to close Lewisboro. We have wetlands restrictions that are outrageous compared to the towns around us, but I get it, it's fine. But you gotta stop somewhere, it's enough already. We don't have any amenities in this town. Why would anyone wanna move here? I can't put a pool, I have seven acres and I can't find a spot to put a pool on my yard because of wetlands. It's ridiculous. So it's enough already. We blow the driveways a bit. Who, what are we gonna do? How do you clean your driveway? Are we supposed to rake our driveways, blow with our mouths to get the, the dirt off of them? It's just ridiculous. If you really want to help people and help asthma, you should be talking about Roundup and lawn treatments because that is what causes asthma, not leaf blowers on large properties. I mean, the chemical treatments need to be applied with permits. Nobody checks those. People are applying fertilizer in our town that's Ill illegally and you're worried about leaf blowers? It's, it's crazy. And the small businesses here, you want us to all just go out and buy 12 electric blowers? Do you want us to starve? Do you, I pay my taxes on time. I'm sorry, but your time is up. Okay. Robin. Damn it. No Thank problem. You. Thank you. Um, Does anybody else yes, wish to speak? Yes, Peter, we have about four other people. Uh, we have okay. Carol. I. That's okay. We have Carol Cernak. I'm asking Carol to unmute. Hi, this is Carol Cerna. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, I'm at 70 Spring Street South in South Salem at Farby Farm. I'd like to speak tonight um, regarding the um, ban on leaf blowing. This to me is a bizarre uh, proposal based on the fact that, I mean, what are you going to, you can't ban lawn mowing, you can't ban uh, lawn edging, weed whacking, um, generators what about all the generators that are running all over this town when the electricity goes out this is a bizarre uh thing i was going to take this to another level regarding the salt dome and the pollution that the um operator uh hickory hickory homes is is generating um but i'll leave that for another time um this to me is blue collar discrimination um, you all are asking all of these people that are putting a hard, honest day's work and, and uh, pride into their work to go out and buy batteries. I don't know if you all have bought batteries for battery operated equipment, but they're expensive. They're pain in the butt and you can't keep them charged. Um, all of this, you know, relates to air pollution. Um, so, you know, I, I, like I said, I was going to take this to another level, but I'll leave that for another time and um, be happy to discuss that with anybody who wants to talk about it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Carol. Um, now I'm asking Matt to unmute. Hi, um, I'm Matt. I live in West uh, Walkabuck, and I own Eastridge Landscape Contractors. Uh, we are a landscape company in the area, and 
I just want to say I was never informed of this. My guys were never informed of this. I found about out, of, out about this last night on Facebook of all places. And we did a lot of research today. And according to our sales representatives, it will take about two batteries per leaf blower. Each of these, or a two pack of batteries costs $800 a piece. These batteries run for two hours. And then the leaf blower itself is another $400. I have four crews who are doing maintenance in the Lewisboro area and we work 10 hours a day. That means each blower, I need to spend $4,000 on batteries alone just to get one blower through the day. We have three blowers on each one of our trucks and that is about $12,000 per truck and $48,000 in order for me to replace my blowers with leaf blowers for five months of work. I am 23 years old. I have business loans. I have to pay my payroll. I ha it costs me about $5,000 a day just to run my operation. Where am I supposed to find over $48,000 to just get leaf blowers so I can do my job? Uh, that's pretty much all I want to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Matt. And now we, I'm asking Copia to unmute, please. Hey, how are you guys? We can hear you. All right. Um, just a couple things. Uh, first off, we we actually sell battery operated blowers, and the battery operated blowers are not really truly powerful enough to do what a landscaper needs. Um, it's just there's too much time involved with a battery operated blower. The other thing is, <clears throat> if you start really studying on batteries, the mining of lithium is uses natural resources. Lithium waste is gonna become a huge problem before you know it. Limitation of the batteries and cell, it, it, the technology is not there yet. If the technology was there and the cost did come down, yes, it's a great proposal. Um, but what we see now, the corded blowers are fine, but who? not many landscapers are gonna be plugging into customers' homes to run their blowers so they can blow what they have to. I know there should be limitations in the summer, when there's really nothing going on, but there should be like ways of allowing a landscaper who's just shoveled 30 yards of compost into somebody's yard to blow the ground, not just to try to sweep because it doesn't always sweep that easily. You, can, you can't even find laborers around here. That's the other issue. So that's a an, an whole other issue that we have. Um, the lot sizes, the lot sizes do make sense. If they're lot sizes that are in close proximity and they're Puerto Rico lots, I can understand banning blowers in those smaller places. But when you have a five, five acre piece of property, it's going to be very hard to really kind of not allow them to blow. The other, the other thing is we've had winters that have lasted through mid April. Then it's wet, the, the snow can start melting. You can't even get anything to move. How do you expect guys to do any work and get anything done in a meaningful way without destroying somebody's lawn without a blower that actually works? That's the other issue. I, I think right now it's still at its infancy, but there are, there should be some parameters met up. And Peter, next time you send the survey, don't send it in a landscaper's busy time, especially during COVID. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, next, I'm asking Dean Travellino to unmute. Hello? Yep. Hi, Dean. You hear me? Yes, we can. I, I don't think I have you and my uh, video on or it's off. I asked you to start your video. Uh, they said I couldn't do it. <laughs> because they, they, you were, they, 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 you were blocking me. No, I'm not blocking him. Asking you to. It says the co-host has, oh, now you're asking me. Very nice. I told you. <laughs> is that there you are. working now? There you are. Yes. Okay, great. All right, I just some comments that came to mind. I just watching this now. I'm not really prepared to speak about it, but um, I don't think that the technology is there yet. I think fostering it somehow, encouraging it. I mean, Dan, if Dan wants to do basically or talking about, it's like banning electric. 
banning gas powered cars 15 years ago. I don't think it can be done. I also think with finances, to me, landscapers are one of our few vibrant businesses in town. Why not kill them off? That doesn't make sense to me. And also, frankly, if you're watching your, your bills, as far as a town, you want to make sure your laws are rationally related to your police power. Otherwise, you're going to have big legal bills. I mean, in the last couple of years, we have lawsuit over the pool, a lawsuit over the HUD project. Last time I was on the meeting, the uh, homeowners around Lake Truesdale hired a lawyer for the cell tower. It, it's got to be very carefully done and rationally related. Otherwise, your legal bills will consume your whole budget before you worry about paying for other things. Uh, in terms of relationship, rational relationship, Tony, I think, if he's willing to be the lead on this, might be a good person because, for example, one thing, hours of operation makes some sense. Outright banning doesn't for a lot of reasons. I may run out of two minutes, but I can talk to you about it later on. But what really concerns me, no one here, first of all, you can't have scientific answers from USA Today articles. I mean, if you want to go about science, cell towers have scientific studies that say they're dangerous. I don't believe it, but there are scientific studies. You guys want to put cell towers next to a nursery school or a library. The only thing about anything to do with, two, with uh, leaf blowers, USA Today, I mean, if there is a study out there, something on the DEC, it talks about two-stroke engines. Tony understands it. I'm not sure, all due respect, you guys should do some research. Two-stroke engine, two-stroke oil is mixed, mixed with uh, oil and gas. They're extremely noisy, full of particulates. They let out a white smoke, like two-stroke motorcycles. Four-stroke engines are the latest, most common for these leaf blowers. And they, they have very, very, they're much quieter, they're still noisy, and a lot of power. Okay, One, Dean, I hate to cut you off, but you said it. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, well, there's plenty more reasons. Stick to rational relationship, mm -hmm. otherwise we'll be broke. Thank you, Dean. Uh, next, I'm asking Chloe Whalen to unmute, please. It's actually John Craig from Golden's Bridge. Um, I, you know, I'm not really sure who in the community besides you as the town board is really seeking this limitation. Uh, you, you mentioned you have survey results, but so far you haven't actually quoted the number of people that are in favor of this restriction. So I'd like to know that number as opposed to just your discussion of it. You know, in Bedford, the restrictions, as Tony mentioned, are only on their Hamlet zones. You may not actually see that as a home run, but that's their execution. That's what they're doing. And then, Peter, you mentioned something around income. I'm not sure why this would be a, a, a punishment on people with high income. So I don't, I don't know how that would play into it at all. Mm -hmm. Dan, I have not seen large groups of people roaming around the town using leaf blowers during the summer. Um, you then started suggesting how you, would, how you would regulate electric blowers or the settings on those. It, it just makes no sense at all. You guys may not care about how your driveway or walkway looks, but other people do. And, and you know, there, there are no diesel leaf blowers. I ask, as, as I think Dean mentioned, find out more about what you're trying to regulate. Finally, I, you know, I just ask you to listen to the unanimous community perspective that you've heard here and avoid this unnecessary limitation. At, at the very least, listen to some of Tony's common sense suggestions mm -hmm. to this. That's all. Thank you. Try to do the right thing. John. Okay. Thank you. Um, now I'm asking Jay to unmute. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Sorry. Uh, you know, I never get on this, but uh, somebody told me about this whole leaf thing, whatever, leaf blower. Uh, my name is Julio. I live on uh, Cross River. Um, I have a lot of friends that are landscapers. And, you know, for the most part, they do a lot of business here in Lewisburg. It's a big area. There's a lot of trees. Obviously, we love living here uh, for that reason. And leaf blowers are on for like two minutes, one minute maybe at a time, if that. And they get shut off. So when it comes to pollution, 
I don't buy that. Uh, number two, we pay a lot of taxes to live in this community for a reason. And we don't need a town board to limit certain things that we do maybe once a week as homeowners. For landscapers, you're going to, you know, these guys are, are losing a lot of money, especially this year because of COVID, and we're going to ruin their business even more. You want to go further than that, we use a company called um, Mosquito Squad that comes around and they spray for mosquitoes and ticks, which is a huge problem. Now they can't come into Lewisboro to do business because they use leaf blowers to connect to their, their equipment. I mean, come on, it's, it's, it's getting to be too much now. You know, I don't think it's a huge problem for leaf blowers to be on for two minutes at a time after you cut your grass. It's not like they're on for one hour, like somebody suggested about driving a car. It's two minutes. And, you know, there's other things you guys can come up with that even maybe, like, like somebody suggested limitation of time. Maybe they can't start using it till 10 in the morning and nothing past five. That would be maybe more feasible when it comes to noise and reducing the amount of, of the, the, the leaf blowers are being used. So consider that. And I'm pretty sure you listen to everybody here. Nobody wants this. Thank you. Thank you, Julio. Uh, next, we have Pamela. I'm asking you to unmute, Pamela. Pamela, I'm asking you to unmute. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, I totally agree with what um, all the people involved with long work are talking about, what Peter from Copia said. Um, I really would like to know the true impetus of why we're talking about this at all. I don't think it's pollution. I think it's noise because I see, see a chart from 2018 that Bedford did with all the other towns that had some sort of restrictions and they're all under noise, not pollution. Um, so I think really the board should go back and look at that. And if you're going to limit anything, I would just say the, maybe the amount of time. Because I think what it's coming from, being a kid that grew up growing, uh, mowing lawns and having that neighbor that was screaming at me at one minute past the town noise ordinance, um, I think you've probably got some people uh, that want every leaf off of their lawn all the time and who may have someone out there blowing for long periods of time. I did have that one summer with a neighbor every Sunday, eight hours. Thank God, only that one year. Um, and I think that's what's doing it. The other thing with what you've written for leaf blowers, this draft, um, you can't define a weather event that's gonna cause somebody to need to blow stuff. And you can't define how long it's gonna take to clean up. I got a multi-trunk tree down now from Issa East. We're still working on that. The tree companies can't get here yet. They can't even get here to give me a quote. So it's going to be more than 10 days for cleanup after all of these strange weather events that we continue to have. Um, that's really all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. Uh, next we have Liz. I'm asking Liz to unmute. Liz, you're unmuted. You just muted again. Liz, I'm asking you to Can you unmute. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. It's saying that I couldn't be unmuted. Hi. Um, I'm asking that you guys do a lot more research about the leaf blower ban. Um, my father-in-law has a business and he said it would literally put him out of business, the cost um, he doesn't live in our area, but he lives in Lower Westchester, and he did look into it, and it would literally put him out of business, the cost that it would take for him. Also, um, the toxic chemicals that are needed to produce a lithium battery, the release of those chemicals through leaching, spills, air emissions, can cause harm in the communities, the ecosystems, in food production. Um, Lithium extraction inevitably harms the soil and can cause air contamination in our lake communities, our wetlands, 
and everywhere else around here. I mean, you saw with the hoverboards, I would never let my kid get one because they were exploding. They were, they're impossible to recycle. They're not good for the environment. I really think that you need to do more research on it. Um, also, you said that the ban would be from May 1st to September 13th. And I think I heard you say now that it would be September 30th. Um, so I wanted to ask that question as well as, you know, people often hire local kids, teenagers, college kids to cut their grass, to give them a little job to do, or, you know, to take the, um, the burden off of the homeowner. And I personally wouldn't want my kid handling one um, with the fact that they can explode or leak or whatever the case may be. Um, and the cost of the increase for the homeowner or for any professional company is really something to look into. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Liz. Uh, next, I'm asking Yulia Devukaj to unmute. Hi, good evening. This is Zed, her husband. He actually asked me if I could do on the hour before. Hello? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Um, could you speak a little louder? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yes, uh, Yulia. Yeah, Yulia asked me if I could uh, talk just from an engineering point of view. Uh, I like Tony. I don't know who Tony is, but he seems very rational, and I would like uh, his uh, his lead on this. But uh, to ban something, it's it's pretty it's pretty harsh. I uh, I would go ahead further than that and ban all the chainsaws, ban all the saws that cut stone. Especially, you're going to put out not just the uh, a landscape industry out of business. You're going to put construction industry out of business. As a contractor that does mega, mega buildings in Manhattan, you could actually limit the hours of usage. You could limit the method of procedure and implement. There is a lot of smart people that this town has and could put this together. Please do a survey. Let the smart people take a lead on this and you'll come out shining. I would, I would advise if, I don't know who Tony is, but he really sounded very intelligent. And that's all I have to say. And thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yulia. Uh, next, I'm asking uh, Sam DeFiro to Hi. you. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Samantha DeFiro. Um, I live in Lewisboro. Um, I wasn't I wasn't preparing to say anything, but I just want to echo what everyone said. Um, it's a little concerning that Mr. Welsh just claimed that there's a handful of responses and then dismissed all the negative responses with a shrug as if the thought the concerns of our town residents are inconsequential. Um, a response of over 400 people of a population of 1,200 is over 30 percent of our town. So if 30% are responding, mostly in the negative, when you're hearing that most contractors didn't even know about the survey, that's a big deal and should be taken seriously. Um, not one toward town board member has, has yet um, said what responses were in support, which were not in support, and why, what were the exact concerns. Um, this is all kind of being glossed over. And someone just mentioned using leaf floors to spray um, chemicals and even like, um, powdered, crushed, you know, non, like organic uh, uh, compositions for tick control. Um, like if we're talking about health effects, Lyme disease is rampant in Westchester. It causes, it can cause paralysis. It can cause permanent inflammatory issues, long-term neurological issues. It affects children, it affects adults, it affects everyone. Um, there's no known cure. There's only treatments. They don't work for everyone. So if we're talking about positive, like possible effects on asthma, we need to be concerned about the very real health effects of ticks in our area, which everyone gets and which definitely um, cause Lyme disease. Um, it's just things. It's, it's obvious that the board really hasn't done much research on this and hasn't taken a good consensus from the town. Um, and just lastly, I want to say that we just passed a res resolution to specifically ban discrimination against uh, a based on class. And this proposal puts the economic burden of adopting this solely on small businesses, which is an attack on the working class. So let's consider that before we adopt anything. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Um, uh, now I'm 
asking Sebastian. Oh, here we go. You're going to get excited. Hi, guys. Um, oh. I, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, we can hear you. Um, so I'm a homeowner and I, I use my leaf blower quite often. Uh, I use it more in the summer than any other month, uh, mainly because I pick up a lot of sawdust from uh, woodworking or tree work that I do on my property. I can't afford a landscaper because, you know, landscapers around here treat us like a cash cow. Uh, I don't know anywhere else that makes as much money on landscaping as like this town. Uh, I propose maybe if you're going to do this, only go for uh, businesses. I think homeowners, we don't use our leaf blowers that much, you know. I agree. I use it for two minutes and I blow away the sawdust. That's about it. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Sebastian. I'm asking uh, Tom Deek to unmute. Tom? Hey, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, as a town of Lewisboro resident, uh, an owner of a landscape construction firm and um, someone who was heavily involved in all the talks with the Bedford town uh, on this same subject. Their board actually was very informed. I'm not seeing that here tonight. And I gotta tell you, they made some concessions that, were, that made some sense. And I just don't see how this, I, I think this is a done deal. I told Tony this this weekend when he asked me. I'm not sure what the reasoning that this is all being brought up is for. I, I don't know, but I don't think it's an intelligent move to even bring this subject up, especially in these days and times. There's so many other things that can be done. There's so much more fruitful for our town. Why we're causing this division now is just beyond me. And this industry, the landscape industry is not there yet. Uh, they are not there yet when it comes to the efficiency to produce lithium batteries that are gonna replace gas engines. It's just not there. So it's gonna cost everybody a ton more money to get their properties cleaned up. Plus it's not just the lawnmower people who are you know, cutting grass. As the fellow before me said, it's also about construction. We do jobs out there, we need to clean up. And we're not gonna pull out hoses and waste our most valuable resource and use water to, to get rid of the the sawdust or the, the uh, powder from cutting stone or whatever, we're gonna use blowers because actually it's the most efficient way to do it right now. So I really think this board needs to step back and really consider what they're proposing. And if they're gonna go forward, let's be a little bit more informed about the subject. That's what I have to say. Thank you, Tom. Uh, next I'm asking Joanne Ames to unmute, please. Joanne. Joanne, I'll ask one more time to unmute. Joanne Ames, E H N E S. Okay, I'll ask Amir Zayek to unmute. Yes, hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can. Yeah, so I'm owner of the business uh, since 1994 and uh, landscaping business and do excavation and stuff. And I just don't know how we would uh, proceed with the battery operator, how we proceed with the um, uh, how the how the homeowner would be paying us to do the job if we don't have the blowers to do it? How would be uh, impact impact on a, on a, on a homeowners? Number one, number two, where 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 we standing with the, with the, uh, all the generators? Where we standing with all the heavy equipment? That's using also, that's making a pollution and stuff. 
So how are we going to proceed with all this? So I think the board should really consider sitting down and and okay. talking over how to, to, to proceed this. That's that's all I have to say. Thank you, Amir. And it appears everyone has already spoken um, okay. one time in this public comment. In that case, I'd like to move on to approval of claims. Do I have a, uh, I'll make a motion to approve claims. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to poll the board. Um, Tony. Um, I don't really have much to say. Uh, j just a, a update on, you know, j continuing issues with internet access, uh, Optimum. Uh, yes, please email us if you still have issues. They've been uh, ratcheting things up a bit and being a little more responsive. Um, so I uh, haven't heard much from residents. I'm assuming things are okay overall, but there's still a handful that I, I, I get the occasional email from. Um, so that's the one thing. Um, and uh, yeah, and we're, we're doing more. We have the new antenna advisory board. Um, we're, we're still looking for people. Um, so if anyone is interested, we've... Um, you know, with the, our new chair, we've done some, uh, some good work with the uh, service providers and um, more to come. So thank you all very much for coming out here tonight. Dan. Um, nothing much. I guess I could report the last numbers I got from Nina about uh, uh, folks who had signed up to, uh, for the solar program were up like at 115 or something like that. So it was a good, uh, response to the, the latest letter. And uh, that's a lot of clean energy on the grid. And I thank all the folks who are, who are in that program and saving money from it. And uh, other than that, I thank everybody tonight for all your input on the leaf blower thing. It's, it's well, well taken and uh, we'll certainly be, you know, this is not gonna rush forward where we are trying to figure it out. So thanks. Jen. I have from Parks and Rec. This is the last, uh, I guess, full week really of the pool being open. So they're open full time until Wednesday, September 9th, weekdays from 12 to 7, weekends 11 a.m. to 6.30. Um, for any town residents that's without a reservation this weekend, so please come out and enjoy the pool before uh, it closes. There will be no fall 2020 brochure just because of the way things are going with COVID, but there are programs being run. So please check out their website um, or reach out to Parks and Rec directly um, to see what's being offered. There will be a food drive. I know that might've been on one of Jane's items. So um, I know she was very instrumental in helping to put that together. That will be next Tuesday, September 8th from five to 7 p.m. at the town park. And there will be um, no trips right now for the Lewisboro seniors, unfortunately, um, but they are doing meetings outdoors at on a true weekly as long as the weather cooperates. So again, you can reach out to Parks and Rec and Pam Beath over there. Um, and I know Peter already mentioned Lewisboro Learning Lot. So that's all that I have. Thank you. Jane. Um, Thank you, uh, Jen, for the acknowledgement there, but I think that really it goes to Dana and the Department of Parks and Rec. Um, all I did was mention that I would like to do it again, and uh, they were quick to offer. Um, we do need volunteers for that event, so if you're interested, please send an email. You can send it to me. You can send it to Jen uh, Castellano. Uh, you can send it to Dana Meeklum over at Parks and Rec or anybody over at Parks and Rec, letting them know you might be interested in volunteering for the food drive. Um, we can use people to unpack cars and, you know, because we'll be doing it, people will be staying in their cars, wearing masks, volunteers wear masks, 
we unload from the car, put it, put it down. So we just need some help with, with those different kinds of tasks. So if you feel comfortable and safe and would like to come out and it's a great community event, I think, to volunteer for something like that. Um, it's a way to really bring everybody together. So we've been talking a lot about bringing people together. Um, I can say the last food drive um, was in June and um, it was a bipartisan event <laughs> or effort, I wanna say. And um, it was a really nice way to get to, together and be communal. Um, at the beginning uh, of a, what was a, you know, kind of a tumultuous summer here. Um, then the other thing I wanted to do was um, thank the Vista Fire Department. Um, yesterday, um, Tony and Peter and myself um, were uh, lucky enough to participate in the annual um, memorial. This year it was pre-recorded um, for obvious reasons and not open to the public. Um, our supervisor uh, made very poignant, uh, short, uh, beautiful remarks. Uh, he read a poem that he reads frequently. Um, and that was really meaningful. We also had a local faith leader by the name of Nikki Edelman, who is uh, newish to town. And she's the pastor over at Stevens United Memorial, I want to say. Methodist. Thank you. The Methodist Church over there, Tony by Meadow Pond, right? Mm -hmm. That's on, correct. On 138 uh, over there. Right. Right. 123. 123. Thank you right. so much. Right. You're so um, it's the Methodist Church on 123. And um, she came and made beautiful remarks. And um, coincidentally, uh, as long as I'm speaking about her, she's also uh, running an anti racist. Uh, group. Uh, it's a weekly Zoom meeting and uh, we're reading Ibram X. Kendi's book, How to Be an Anti-Racist, and discussing it. Um, and she begins each meeting with a prayer. It is faith-based and ends with a prayer, but in the middle, you know, everyone's welcome. Um, and so, and I want to thank Chief Jeff Peck for his leadership, uh, for his invitation, and uh, Phil Katz as well, and then of course Brian Porco for um, his like the brilliant uh, cinematography um, and his efforts there. Um, it was a very meaningful event, it always is, um, and I, I got to spend some nice time with our police chief afterwards too, just having some coffee and chatting, and uh, it's always a good, good thing to bring us together. Um, so thank you, Vista Fire Department. Um, nothing much to add. Things I was going to mention have already been mentioned, um, except that um, I'd like to follow up on, on the 9-11 um, memorial and say that uh, Henry Wolfe and Brian Porco are working hard to try to get that on Channel 20 by September 11th. Um, with my encouragement. <laughs> um, next, uh, I'd like to announce that the next town board meeting will be Monday, September 14th, 2020 at 7.30. And I'd like to make a motion to, a, to adjourn to executive session to, to discuss appointments to committees and other personnel issues. Second. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Discussion. Anybody in all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, thanks everyone for coming out. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.